Today we've got this nice problem that was from the math magazine. It's problem 1619. And uh, what's really cool about this is it's got this recursively defined sequence, but the recursion is within the cosine function. So let's see what we've got here. We want to describe all sequences of real numbers. We'll denote them a sub n. And it's important that this sequence is a subset of the interval from zero to pi. In other words, all of these numbers, a sub n, are between 0 and pi, including 0, but not including pi. Then furthermore, they satisfy this recursion. So cosine of a m plus n is equal to cosine of a m plus cosine of a n over 1 plus cosine of a m times cosine of a n. Okay, so let's see how we can get started with this. And I would say the main trick here is to look at maybe what I'll call a certain accessory sequence. And the accessory sequence goes like this. I'll call it b sub n, and it's equal to 1 minus cosine of a n over 1 plus cosine of a n. Okay, cool. Now, what we'd like to do is build some sort of similar recursion to what we have right here, but out of the B sequence. But notice the Bs are outside of cosine, so that's like kind of helpful, I think. Okay, so let's maybe do that. Let's start constructing that recursion over here for the B. So let's observe that Bm plus n is equal to 1 minus cosine of A plus m plus n over 1 plus cosine of a m plus n, just by the definition of our b sequence. But now what we can do is apply our recursion for cosine of a m plus n to this term that's in the numerator as well as the denominator. So let's see, that's going to leave us something like this. We have 1 minus, and then here we'll have cos a m plus cos a n over, let's see, it's one plus this product. So a m cos a n. And in the denominator, we have something pretty similar. We'll have one plus, well, essentially the same thing. So let's get that written down here. Okay, so there we've got it. But now we've got this fraction of fractions. So the standard thing to do here would be to multiply the numerator and the denominator by something so that we can simplify this a little bit. And maybe I'll put this object in green parentheses. And what we'll do is we'll multiply the numerator as well as the denominator with that green parentheses object. So let's see, that's gonna leave us with something like this. We have 1 plus cos a m times cos a n minus cos a m uh, minus cos a n. So that's what's occurring in the numerator uh, because the, well, the 1 gets built up and then the denominator in the numerator will get canceled. And then let's see, in the denominator we have 1 plus cos a m cos a n, but now we've got a plus cos a m plus cos a n. So we've got something that looks like that. But now let's observe that we can factor out the numerator and the denominator. There's actually kind of an obvious factorization here. Let's look in the numerator and observe that we can factor this as 1 minus cos a m times 1 plus cos a n, or sorry, 1 minus also. And then, well, there's a similar factorization of the denominator, and that factorization of the denominator is, well, the same except we have a plus. So we have 1 plus cos a m times 1 plus cos a n. Okay, cool. But now we can put this a m term over this a m term, and then likewise this a n term grouped over this a n term, and observe that that's going to give us b m times b n. So check it out, we've got b m times b n. So the B sequence has this nice like addition to multiplication property if you read it from left to right. 
or multiplication to addition property if you read it from left to, or from right to left. Now let's observe the following, and I think this is like a good place to enter the next phase of our argument. So let's observe that b sub 0 is the same thing as b sub 0 plus 0, which is b sub 0 times b sub 0 by our recursion, or b sub 0 squared. But there are only two real numbers that square to themselves, and that's 0 or 1. So that means we have b0 equals 0, or b0 equals 1. Now, uh, before we look at really what's going to end up being the main case, which is this b0 equals 1, we can take care of this b0 equals 0 just in this like brief space that we have down here. So observe that if b0 equals 0, then that means 1 minus cosine over 1 plus cosine equals 0, but then it means that numerator is 0. But then if b0 equals 0, then that means we have bn, which equals bn plus 0, which equals bn times b0. Well, that means that bn equals 0 for all n. But now let's go up here and look here. If bn is equal to 0, then the numerator, 1 minus cosine of a n equals 0, meaning that cosine of a n equals 1. And this is true for all n. But since we're taking a n between 0 and pi, that means that a n equals 0. Okay, so this is maybe a, a boring example of a sequence satisfying this rule down here. So, but even though it's boring, it is a possibility. So let's maybe go down here and collect our possibilities. And let's say here, if b0 equals 0, then that implies that a n equals 0 for all n bigger than or equal to 0. And then, well, our next case will be built off of if b0 equals 1. And we'll see that that's actually going to split into two cases. So let's maybe get those cases ready here, and then we'll work through them on the next board. So we just determined that one of our possibilities was we have a sequence of just all zeros, which I guess that's clearly possible based off of what we have right here. Notice if all of the a's are zero, we get a one over here, and then we have one plus one over one plus one. In other words, we have one on the right hand side. So that satisfies this uh, equation or this recursion. Now we're going to look at the case when b0, this uh, component, or I should say accessory sequence, is 1. Remember, it could either be 0 or 1. Okay, so now, well, let's observe that if b0 is 1, we can find a value for uh, a0 pretty easily. Because notice b0 being 1 means this numerator equals this denominator. So in other words, we have 1 minus cos a0 equals 1 plus cos a0. But in turn, what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that cos a0 equals 0. But again, because the a n terms only come from 0 to pi, that means that a0 is pi over 2. That's the only 0 of the cosine function on that interval. But now we can go ahead and see if we can pin down a value for a1 via our recursion over here. So let's do that. We have cos a1, thinking about a1 as a1 plus 0, that's going to give us cos a0 plus cos a1 over 1 plus that product. So we have cos a0, cos a1 here. But uh, remember, cos a0 is 0, so this is 0, and then this whole thing here is 0. And observe that we simply get cos a1 equals cos a1. But this is our defining recursion, and our defining recursion failed to define cosine of a1. So what does that mean? Well, that means that cosine of a1 is really free to be anything. In other words, this recursion allows for infinitely many different values of cosine of a1. But if cosine of a1 is free, then that means that b1 is also free. But then b1 can take on, well, a bunch of different values. Like I said, it's free, but it can never be negative based off of our choices of a1 right here. 
So in fact, B1 has to come from the half open interval from zero to infinity, but it is free to be anything within that interval. Now, if you look at this interval, there's one number that stands out and that's the number zero. And often there's going to be some sort of different behavior happening when something is zero versus when something is non-zero. So that's going to fuel the rest of our cases. So let's look right here, the case when B1 equals zero or the case down here when B1 is non-zero. Okay, so maybe let's go over here and look at the case when B1 is zero. But if B1 is zero, then that means that Bn plus one, which is Bn times B1 is also equal to zero. But then that recursion allows us to see that, well, all values of Bn are zero just by applying this kind of rule over and over and over again. So if all values of Bn are zero, well, that's gonna lead us to all values of An are zero as long as n is bigger than or equal to one. So that gives us the following sequence. We have a zero equals pi halves, and then we have a n equals zero for all n bigger than or equal to one. And then we're left with what's really the interesting case, which is when b zero is one and b one is non-zero. So let's jump into that. Okay, so now we're looking at the case when b one is non-zero. But observe that in that case, we can take bn and write it as bn minus one plus one or bn minus one times b1. And then we can repeat this over and over and over again to get that bn is the same thing as b1 to the n power. But since b1 is non-zero, then that means that bn is also non-zero. So in other words, if we've got a seed right here, a second seed, which is non-zero, then everything else is also non-zero. But that's also going to give us an equation that we can solve for a n. So let's observe that we can take, uh, what is it? We've got 1 minus cos a n over 1 plus cos a n is equal to b n, but b n is b 1 to the nth power. And we can solve this for, well, first for cosine of a n and then take the inverse cosine. So let's observe that this gives us 1 minus cos a n equals uh, b1 to the n plus b1 to the n times cos a n. We can move the cos a n terms to one side of the equation. That's going to leave us with b1 to the n. That's going to leave us with cos a n plus b1 to the n cos a n equals, let's see, one minus b1 to the n. They can, then we can factor a cosine a n out of the left-hand side and divide, and that leaves us with cos a n equals one minus b1 to the n over one plus b1 to the n. But in turn, that means that a sub n equals this inverse cosine of 1 minus b1 to the n over 1 plus b1 to the n. Where you can think about b1 to the n as, well, either the first term or the second term, depending on how you're counting, of this sequence, or just some other number. Like we could set b1 to the n equal to something, and then we would have this formula for a sub n. But regardless of how we've done it, what we have here is another sequence that satisfies our recursion over here. And since we've worked through all of the possibilities carefully, that means that in fact, we have found all such sequences satisfying this recursion.